Perfect. Okay. Today what we're going to be talking about is naming polyatomic ionics. What we did last time is we just put two elements and put them together. Well, we're going to take this a step further today and we're going to use the polyatomic ions that are on the back of your handout. I'm going to show you this piece of paper real fast. If you remember, we've given you this periodic table and you've probably marked yours up. On the back, on the left hand side, there's a list that starts with ammonium and then alphabetically talks about all the polyatomic ions. It would make sense to you that the word poly, meaning many, is stuck to the word atom. These are many different atoms. These aren't just one element from the periodic table. And so I'm going to show you how to deal with these. They work the exact same way as ionics. The only thing is, is we have to add some parentheses. Uh, and in some cases, there's a little trick to reading this part of the table. So I'm going to do a few examples for you, and hopefully you'll get the gist of it. All right, so the first one... <laughs> okay, so the first one we're going to do is iron... And see, I don't want to get in the thing here, but I will. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Iron 2, and we remember this from our metals, and this is hydroxide. And if you notice, iron 2 hydroxide, um, this is from the periodic table and we have to give you this, hydroxide is going to be mm, about middle of the way and that's an anion, which means that it's negative. So when we rewrite this, right, we've got iron and this is a plus 2 because I told you that. And if you remember, hydroxide is a minus 1 and that's given right here on this sheet, OH minus. We'll zoom in, OH minus. Okay, exciting. Keep in mind that just as other ionics, these have to balance out. So what we're going to do is we're going to, um, we obviously have two positive charges. We're gonna need two negative charges. And the temptation is to just stick the two down here like we have been doing. But the problem is because we have a polyatomic, we need to make sure the two applies to the H as well as the O. So the way this would be written is this, Fe OH2, so that we realize that these both combine to make negative one charges and we need two of them. So it would not be correct to write this. This would be wrong. You need the parentheses around your hydroxide. So that's how we do this one. Let's do another one that's a little easier, okay? Instead of getting harder, we're getting easier. Okay, the next one we're going to do is calcium bromate. All right, calcium bromate. First of all, we can look on our periodic table and find calcium. It's on the left-hand side, and it's a plus two, right? Then we need to look on our polyatomic ion sheet, and we're like, oh, no, there's no bromate on there, right? If you know, we go straight from acetate to chlorides. So you're like, what do we do? If you look at the very bottom of this sheet, the formula for bromine and iodine follows the same for other halogens. So if you look in these chlorines, they're going to work the exact same way. So if we notice, chlorate is ClO3 minus. So bromate will be BrO3 minus. So even though that's not on the sheet, we still have that information there. Once again, we need to balance charges. We have two positive charges, one negative. Our parentheses rule is going to follow. So we're going to have calcium, parentheses, bromate. Whoa, -oh, not that kind of bro. Big O, bro. Okay, there we go. And then we need two of those. So I want you to realize that this bromate all comes down, and what gets multiplied is the whole thing, right? Two negatives, two positives, we're good. Okay, let's do another one, but we're going to do it backwards, all right? We're going to do this one backwards. I'm going to give you the formula, and we're going to name it. Actually, if I were a good teacher, I wouldn't make those capital. There we go. Strontium 
phosphate. Oh, I said I was going to do this backwards. I'm lying. We'll do ammonium acetate backwards just for fun. All right. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to find strontium. It's in the plus two category. Then we look in our polyatomics and we find phosphate. And that's going to be PO4, 3 minus. So what we need to do is we need to realize we need three of these and two of these for a least common multiple of six. So this becomes... And what you need to realize here is, is there's a lot going on. There are two of these phosphates, three strontiums, a lot, a, a huge mess going here. But if you really stop and think about the polyatomics really just being sort of one entity, that's going to make it a lot easier. Um, let's do one more, just so um, you don't freak out. Uh, and we'll do this one backwards. And we're already up to what, six minutes, Liz? Mm hmm Okay. Thank you. How about this? What is this? NH4C2H3O2. And you're probably looking at that and saying to yourself, oh my gosh, I have absolutely no idea what that is. Well, when you see something like that, you're automatically going to have to start grouping things and say to yourself, okay, I can do this. You hopefully can see that this is one polyatomic and that this is another. And it's actually incorrect to write these parentheses, okay? So almost forget that I did it. But see if you can find one polyatomic that's got an H4. And hopefully you can see, oh my gosh, Miss Rich, it's the first one. This is going to be ammonium. And then the question is, what's that? Well, you need to realize that if you look just a little bit down the way, just the absolute next one, this is going to be acetate. And these are both from the polyatomics. If you really look, this is a plus one, this is a minus one, no subscripts needed. But I just want to keep you mindful that when we start giving these to you mixed, we're going to throw these in here. And so the faster that you recognize the polyatomics, the better off you're going to be. And I think for the most part, this covers it.